Adam and Joanne with you on The Breakfast Show. There are some trades and professions that are slowly disappearing. And yet, if you talk to the people who work in these trades, you wonder why. BBC Radio Shropshire's Genevieve Tudor has been learning about clocks in Ellesmere in the company of Christopher and Tommy Jobson. Their jobs are on the critically endangered skills list. That's a beautiful bong, but it's not a bong, it's a bing, isn't it? It is, yes, yes. That's it's, such a pretty clock. It's ringing on a bell. And how old is that? Knocking on for 200. Yes, yeah, probably is just over 200, that one. That one's knocking on for 300. Oh, I say. Oh, let's hear this one bing, bong. Does this one bing or bong? Uh, this one's on a bell, so it's more of a ting. My goodness, it's even, even the works are pretty. And this is 300 years old? Yes, yeah, getting on that way, yeah. Have you bought this back to life? Or yes, it was in a bit of a state, this clock. Bought it from auction a few years ago, about four years ago, something like that. Yeah. It was all, all original and all there, but it was, you know, the veneers were all sort of falling off and, you know, there was a, a box of bits accompanying it. And um, so we've restored it uh, back to its uh, former glory. Where would this have stood? Uh, this would have been in a reasonably grand house because it, for that period a clock that was as, as pretty as this one with the mounts and, you know, it's, it's a good quality clock. This is ebony veneer. That was an extra cost and level of quality. So this was, a, this was an expensive clock when it was new. Uh, so it would have been in a, quite a grand house and probably in a reasonably prominent location to show it off. And does it do dates as well? Because at the top there's a, a sort of moon face, is that right? That's the phase of the moon, yes, yes. So that's a rolling moon. It's, uh, it's just indicating the phase of the moon with that brass section there sort of taking the crescent out of the, out of the painted section. And then you've also got a calendar aperture, so that shows the date. Blimey! <laughs> oh, this is fascinating, absolutely oh, fascinating. 1720. Yeah. Are you a clock maker, a clock repairer? It's an old family thing. It goes back in my family to the 1830s. Uh, my great great grandfather, he was apprenticed as a cabinet maker. One of his jobs was to take the carcasses of, of long case clocks down to the clockmaker. And uh, he got interested in clocks and, and he went and learnt clock making and uh, it's come down the family, my grandfather, and, uh, and I learnt clock making from a wonderful old Polish uh, uh, clock maker here in Ellesmere. It's in the genes, you know. It must be, oh, yeah, yes. yes. Yes, So you um, have a long and um, amazing career in mending and looking after and making clocks, and now your son is doing it too. Yes, yes. he started when he was ten, you know. No, no I, um, I think I um, sort of took the first clock apart, yeah, when I was ten, and... Um, How popular was that? Uh, well, it was under supervision, so ah. it was okay, yeah, yeah. And it went back together and Why it worked, that? so that was the I no yeah, idea. I have the no bonus. idea, because there were other clocks that weren't as lucky but then, but, uh, <laughs> the in the early days. Is, is this a profession that many people follow? No, no, it's very rare. Very rare. Christopher and Tommy Jobson from Horologium Precision. Well done. In Elsmith. <laughs> Thank you. That I have, we have practised that word, and I bet that's wrong. Well, we were talking about it in the newsroom, weren't we, and I just thought, you know what, I'm not doing it. It's a wonderful word, because you're being a horologist. Yeah. Horologium. I hope I've said that correctly. Show off. Uh, thank you, Christopher and Tommy. And you can hear more from fa the father and son uh, duo later on in the programme. And what is a bong and what is a bing? Or a ding when and is a, a dong. bing a bong and a bong a bing? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell the difference myself. Uh, maybe you can, listening to the radio right now. Maybe you know. Uh, it's BBC Radio Shop Show with Adam, Adam and Joanne. Joanne. Till it's nine. it's lovely to have you uh, keeping us company this morning. Now, earlier in the programme, you may have heard Tommy Jobson from Horolog... <laughs> I've been practising this. <laughs> we, have, we literally spent the time you listened to Jim's wonderful programme and Joanne has tried to say this word. You can do this word. I am never going to be asked to come back on air ever, ever again. I can, the managers have probably got their heads in their hands right now. Tommy Jobson is from Horologium Precision in Ellesmere. 
talking about his profession. Uh, Clockmaking and restoration has been the family business since 1830, and Tommy will eventually start to pass on his expertise. BBC Radio Shropshire's Genevieve Tudor has been to the workshop and met Tom Tommy and his father, Christopher. <laughs> What is that? Uh, that's a um, particularly nice uh, music box. Um, what gives it a particularly resonant sound is the fact it's in a solid walnut case. Is it a clock? It, that is actually a clock. And um, every three hours it, um, it sets off a tune. So you get, uh, you get that every three hours. <laughs> uh, and a different tune each time. It's a jukebox, essentially. It's uh, cycling through, I think, 12 tunes. Yeah. <laughs> That is brilliant. I've spent my whole career doing this, um, so I've been doing it for nearly 20 years now, I suppose. Most of my experience has come from the bench, so sitting next to the right people, working on the right clocks and gaining the experience. I've just been very lucky that I've been trusted to work on some amazing clocks over the years, uh, and you, you build up a, a whole bank of experience and knowledge. It's, it's a very difficult uh, trade to be taught it's it's not as sort of as simple as just saying well this is how you do this and they'll all be the same ever after every clock is slightly different and you have to work your way around various problems so you're always every day every clock you're confronted with a new oh hang on a minute how am i going to how am i going to do this so being taught that is very difficult. You can't sort of come straight out of a university course saying I know everything because it's not as simple as that. And you are part of the worshipful company of clockmakers, it right, says yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, yes, I'm a freeman of the uh, worshipful company of clockmakers, which is the, uh, the guild in, in London for clockmakers. Is that posh? Uh, yes, yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the dinners are quite something to behold, yeah. It's, uh, I want to go to one. <laughs> yeah, oh no, it's, it's absolutely fantastic being part of that and sort of, you know, going to Mansion House for the, uh, for the Christmas dinner is, is quite something and sort of having the Astronomer Royal give the uh, after dinner speech and that kind of thing, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> Sometimes when I sit down now I, I sort of imagine the clockmakers that have done the same thing over the years and all the, the big names, you know, Thomas Tompion, Graham, Nib, everybody, well, um, Smith there, everybody, um, the, the, the clocks that I sort of work on and the, the makers that I look up to in history they did exactly what I'm doing at that point in time, and it's quite a thought. And when I signed the um, the uh, the book to become a um, a freeman of the of the company, again, you're basically signing your name on the bottom of the list, and you think about all the names that have come before you on that list. It's uh, it's quite a it's quite a thought. Are you looking for an apprentice? Can I apply? <laughs> uh, I, I will eventually take an apprentice, but um, at the moment it's a case of I'm, you know, I'm just sort of need to get my head down and do some work myself. And unfortunately, with it just being me as a as a one man band essentially, um, I don't really have the time to do the work and train somebody at the moment. So, um, but I um, I do intend to uh, pass on knowledge in the future, definitely. Is it lucrative? Not particularly, if I'm honest. I think most <laughs> clockmakers are in it for the love of it rather than for, um, for the money. They have to be. It's almost a lifestyle choice to, to be interested in, in horology. Yeah. Interesting career. That's Tommy Jobson clocking in. I like what you've done. Wow. I like what you've done. Bing bong. It's <laughs> too much. One step too far. 8.25. <laughs>